Each Christmas at this time, my beloved father broadcast a message to his people in all parts of the world. Today, I am doing this to you who are now my people. As he used to do, I am speaking to you from my own home, where I am spending Christmas with my family. And let me say at once how I hope that your children are enjoying themselves as much as mine are on a day which is especially the children's festival, kept in honour of the child born at Bethlehem nearly 2,000 years ago. Most of you to whom I am speaking will be in your own homes, but I have a special thought for those who are serving their country in distant lands far from their families. Wherever you are, either at home or away, in snow or in sunshine, I give you my affectionate greetings with every good wish for Christmas and the New Year. At Christmas, our thoughts are always full of our homes and our families. This is the day when members of the same family try to come together, or if separated by distance or events, meet in spirit and affection by exchanging greetings. But we belong, you and I, to a far larger family. We belong, all of us, to the British Commonwealth and Empire, that immense union of nations with our homes set in all the four corners of the earth. Like our own families, it can be a great power for good, a force which I believe can be of immeasurable benefit to all humanity. My father and my grandfather before him worked all their lives to unite our peoples ever more closely and to maintain its ideals which were so near to their hearts. I shall strive to carry on their work. Already you have given me strength to do so, for since my accession ten months ago, your loyalty and affection have been an immense support and encouragement. I want to take this Christmas day my first opportunity to thank you with all my heart. Many grave problems and difficulties confront us all, but with a new faith in the old and splendid beliefs given us by our forefathers and the strength to venture beyond the safeties of the past, I know we shall be worthy of our duty. Above all, we must keep alive that courageous spirit of adventure that is the finest quality of youth. And by youth, I do not just mean those who are young in years. I mean, too, all those who are young in heart, no matter how old they may be. That spirit still flourishes in this old country and in all the younger countries of our Commonwealth. On this broad foundation, let us set out to build a truer knowledge of ourselves and our fellow men, to work for tolerance and understanding among the nations, and to use the tremendous forces of science and learning for the betterment of man's lot upon this earth. If we can do these three things with courage, with generosity, and with humility, then surely we shall achieve that peace on earth, goodwill toward men, which is the eternal message of Christmas and the desire of us all. At my coronation next June, I shall dedicate myself anew to your service. I shall do so in the presence of a great congregation drawn from every part of the Commonwealth and Empire, while millions outside Westminster Abbey 
will hear the promises and the prayers being offered up within its walls and see much of the ancient ceremony in which kings and queens before me have taken part through century upon century. You will be keeping it as a holiday. But I want to ask you all, whatever your religion may be, to pray for me on that day, to pray that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. May God bless and guide you all through the coming year.